watching the school's telelearning service from the Nebraska Department of Education and Nebraska Educational Telecommunications. Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore, and greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, I'll capture you, all your stories will be mine. There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower, till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower. Now poor Marion, the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away. Oh, my goodness! Are you all right? Well, I'm all right, but this broom isn't. It won't fly, and it makes a terrible racket. Oh, here, you might as well keep that and use it to sweep up the dungeon with. Thank you. Say, do you have a story about a fox ready yet? Almost. I just need a little more time. Oh, well, in that case, I'll be going. I need to work on these broom handles anyway. Wait, how can I call you when I do have a story for you? Ooh, something wonderful right here. This is my magic mirror. And I'll appear whenever you say these magic words. Now, you listen. Left and right and Zachary Zoo. Here's a story just for you. Okay, <laughs> let me try it. Left and right and Zachary Zoo. Here's a story just for you. How was that? Where did she go? Well, we might as well start putting a story together about a fox. Here he is, that sly old creature. And, uh, oh, here's somebody you might know. It's the little red hen. I wonder where her apron is. Oh, here's an apron like hers. And inside, I bet, are her little scissors. Well, let's put these things in the machine. The fox, the hen, and the apron. And we'll turn it on. <laughs> And it's the story of the little red hen. Once upon a time, though I can't say exactly when, there lived away in the country a little small red hen. She wore a nice little apron and a little sunbonnet too. And she walked pickety peckety as little hens always do. She had lived the whole of her little life in the same little house. It stood all by itself in a lonely spot just at the edge of a wood. It was very snug and cozy and warm, and the garden wasn't big, but just what a little small red hen could nicely manage to dig. And once upon a time, just the same time, of course, there also lived a wicked old fox among the heath and horse. Silently, slyly, he crept round the fields, stealing geese and ducks and cocks, dressed in a hat and a long great coat, this wicked, cunning old fox. His house was perched on top of a hill. It was made of rock and stone. He and his wife, old mother fox, they lived there all alone. It was dark and damp and drafty, ugly and cold and bare. 
a tidy little small red hen would never be happy there. Now, the wicked old fox had often tried over and over again to catch by some sly trick or other the little small red hen. But she was far too clever for him. She never let him find her. And whenever she left her little house, she would lock the door behind her. One morning, very early indeed, before the sun was hot, the wicked old fox said to Mother Fox, put on the big black pot. I'm going to have another try. I shall soon be back. And then, I promise at last, you'll see I've caught the little small red hen. So he put on his hat and shouldered his sack and walked very sly and slow until at last he came in sight of the snug little house below. And he laid his sack very softly down on the ground behind a tree. And then he lay down to wait and watch as quiet as quiet could be. He was getting tired of waiting there when the house door opened wide. And the little small red hen came forth to gather sticks outside walking pickety-peckety, exceedingly neat and trim. And the wicked old fox lay watching. She never once thought of him. While she was picking up the sticks, he slipped behind the door and laughed <laughs> to myself very low. And he put the sack on the floor. She stepped inside with her bundle of sticks, as cheerful as one could be. When the wicked old fox sprang full at her throat, I've got you now, cried he. What good are bolts and bars, he said. How silly you must be to think that they could ever keep out a cunning old fox like me. Of course, the poor little small red hen was now in a terrible fright. She gave a scream and dropped her sticks. They tumbled left and right. But she just had time to fly on a beam that went across overhead, quite out of reach of the wicked old fox. But I'll have you yet, he said. Then he began to run round and round, and round and round beneath, looking every now and then, laughing and showing his teeth. It made her dreadfully dizzy and faint. She gave a cluck and a lurch. She gave a flap and a flutter and flop, and fell right off her perch. Then the wicked old fox threw open his sack, and in less than half a minute, he had picked her up, and with a cry of joy, and hastily stuffed her in it. He swung it over his shoulder and smiled and started off for his den. <laughs> How nice you'll be for supper, said he, my dear little small red hen. So there she was, poor thing, you see, shut up quite tight in the sack. She found it most unpleasant there, close and stuffy and black. But she thought of her little scissors in her apron pocket hid. I will cut a hole and see where I am, she said. And so she did. Now the sun was hot, and all the time it was getting hotter still. And the wicked old fox grew very tired as he climbed the heathy hill. He flopped on a mossy bank and said, It may be lazy, but I think I'll just have 40 winks. And his wicked eyes blinked and shut. The little small red hen indeed was also very glad to rest a bit from the jogs and jolts and the bangs and bumps she'd had. And she thought, if I cut a little hole, why not a big one, too? And she cut a slit that was long enough to let her whole self through. Wasn't she pleased to be free again? She said, I must run double quick. But before I go, I'll manage to play the wicked old fox a trick. And she took a great big knobby stone as large as a lump of coal, and heaved and pushed and pushed and heaved till she got it through the hole. And then she scuttled, panting home as fast as her legs would go, not walking pickety-peckety this time. Oh, dear, no. She scuttered and fluttered down the hill and scampered through her door. Thank goodness, she said, all out of breath, I'm safe at home once more. But when the wicked old fox woke up, it was getting dark and late. He shouldered the sack and found it now a most remarkable weight. <laughs> Dear me, he said, she weighs like a goose. I thought she'd be light as a wren. What a splendid supper we'll have tonight. Off this little small red hen. So heavily, wearily, trudged he home. 
and he kept shifting the sack about. And when at last he came in sight, there was old Mother Fox looking out. He asked, my love, is the pot on the boil? It's boiling fast, she replied. He said, then take the lid off, my dear, and we'll plop her plump inside. So old Mother Fox took off the lid, hot and steaming and black, while the wicked old fox, with hurry and haste, untied the mouth of the sack. And splash went the great big stone. It was a splash, my word. I don't suppose a splash so loud has ever before been heard. The bees and birds and bunnies all who had gone to bed for the night for miles around woke up with a jump in a most tremendous fright. And the boiling water in the pot splashed out on every side and terribly scalded the wicked old fox and old mother fox and they died. There they lay all still and stark up in the house on the hill. There they lay and for all I know there they are lying still. But the hen lived happily, just as before, in her dear little house by the wood, walking pickety-peckety, working as hard as she could. I've had a great many troubles. I hope they won't happen again. Anything for a quiet life, said the little small red hen. Why, that story was written like a poem, wasn't it? Did you hear some rhyming words? Hen, when, fox, box. I think Kerfumbly will like this story, and if she does, maybe I can go on to the library. Help me call her, will you? Left and right and Zachary Zoo, here's a story just for you. This just isn't a bit better. What do you want, dearie? Here's a story. <gasps> oh, a story already. Thank you. The Little Red Hen. Hen? I wanted a story about a fox. Is there a fox in this story? Oh, there is. Is he a good fox or a bad fox? Oh, a bad fox. Did he catch the little red hen? He did. Was the little red hen a good hen or a bad hen? Oh, she was a good hen. Did she get away from the fox? She did. She got out of the bag. Well, how did she get out of the bag? Oh, with her Scissors. Oh, I'm so glad she got away. Oh, but I don't want Marion to get away. I want another story. Let's see. Uh, now, this story has rhyming words in it. Hen, when, fox, box. Uh, Marion, you know, Witches never use rhyming words in stories, only in magic spells. Oh, Kerfumbly, you don't like the story? Oh, I love the animal story. Just try to find one that doesn't rhyme. An animal story that doesn't rhyme. Will you look for a story like that, and I'll meet you right here next time. Once upon a time, a witch loved stories galore, and greedy as she was, she wanted more and more. When she saw that the librarian had stories of all kinds, she said, I'll capture you, all your stories will be mine. There took place a curious chase through meadow, tree, and flower, till at last they ended up right at the witch's tower. Now poor Marion, the librarian, a prisoner she'll stay, until the witch is happy and lets Marion go away.